Thank you, ma'am. Senator, Senator from Charleston, what purpose do you ask, sir? Senator. I'd like to Hansen. ask the senators a question when he is done. Why don't you go ahead and ask me the question? Senator, you, Senator Yields for a question. <laughs> Senator Yields. I'm sorry, I've been in a snappy event for the last six weeks, so I'm <laughs> just trying well, to. Senator get Yields for a question. Well, well, Senator, I just want to make it clear, and this is, I have great respect for you and your legal ability. And, um, but did Judge Newman rule against your side, your client? On occasion. I mean, it, it, look, it's a, it's a six-week process. We'd object, they'd object, he'd rule for us, rule against us. It's a, it's, now, are you asking me, do I think he made legal errors? Obviously. I mean, we're going to appeal. Does that mean I'm right? No. There's five folks across the street that will make that decision, and then there's, you know, federal court. So the process is working. I think that's what I want to tell you. Well, Senator, what I wanted to ask you, do you think, because I have an opinion on this, and, I, and one, of the, one of the criticisms um, against the way that we elect and choose judges in South Carolina is that they'll be beholding to legislators once they get on the bench. Didn't happen in this case. Do you case. think that happened to happen you in this, in this case, case, Senator? Trust me, okay? <laughs> I've got a couple big black and blue marks on this <laughs> rear end of mine that will well, we'll affirm that. Please don't. Sh we'll take your word for that. You don't need to show <laughs> us. But, th but I just wanted to raise this is this is one of this is the most high profile case probably in the history of South Carolina, and at least in the age of YouTube and internet, it certainly what um, just grasped the the attention of of a nation and a world even. But I always often hear this criticism that if, if the General Assembly elects judges, then they're going to be beholden to lawmakers. And I just wanted to make that point. That didn't happen to you during this trial, Senator. There, there may have been a point, I've been doing this almost 50 years, there may have been a point in the distant past where, you know, you had one senator per, per county, um, home rule was typically from their home, um, and things operated differently back then. There wasn't transparency. There weren't computer records. There weren't, uh, and, and that's evolved so that we're electing uh, a, a different generation, if you will, than when I started out. Um, and I don't sense that um, legislator, leg, lawyer legislators, I don't get it. I mean, what I will get accommodated on is schedule. Um, uh, you know, if I need a uh, motion scheduled on a Monday or Friday to accommodate me, that's fine. But I don't, nobody, I don't go into any courtroom saying, you know, I voted for that person or I know that, I mean, many of them at my age I knew before they were judges and have a personal relationship with them. I just don't see that, I don't see that happening. Now, I'm not telling you that doesn't happen, you know, in some remote rural area where, you know, it's a different environment than where I practice, um, although I just spent six weeks in a remote rural area, but I didn't see, I didn't, I, I don't see that. I, I will tell you this. I've been around the country. I try cases all over the country over the years. Public election of judges is a disaster. I had a case in Texas. I agree with that. I had a case in Texas where we argued a motion, um, and uh, the, uh, the other side, apparently, uh, I would just had local counsel, contributed a whole bunch of that guy. He was just beating us up. He got unelected before the ruling came out. We got another judge. Um, who our local council was friends with or contributed to, and we won. So, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, friendship's one thing. Cash is something else. So public election's horrible, in my opinion. The, having them appointed by the governor, uh, I think, puts too much power in his hands. And by the way, we have a retirement system for these judges where they have to serve 20, what is it, 20 years before they can, they can draw down. So what are they going to be willing to do to make sure they get reappointed? I mean, it's just, this is, I think, while there are problems with this system, um, I think this is the best system. Now, would I suggest uh, reforms to the judicial merit selection process? Absolutely. And I'm going to do that this year as these bills come up. I, I agree with you on that, but that the one issue about popular elected judges, the scales of justice don't have any fingers to stick into the wind, and that's what will happen if we have properly elected judges. The governor nominating and, 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 and confirmation by advice and consent by the Senate, that is 
perhaps acceptable, but the main point that I wanted to hear, because I hear this time and again, that people think, members of the public think that we get special treatment as lawyer legislators, and this case demonstrated, I think, to a watching world, you did a great job, you represented your client well, the prosecution did a great job, you think they, there was some error, and that's your duty if you think there may be and you have an argument in a case that you, that you, that you appeal. But it's pretty clear that, that you as a, as a senator did not receive any, and, and, nor your client, receive any special treatment. And that, that is not the case in general in, in, in the state of South Carolina. And we have judges who are they're going to issue rulings that are impartial and the most important thing of a, a some you, you go to court all the time but when your clients it's their usually their one and only day in court and they're scared to death they're worried are they going to be fairly treated and this system does produce judges like judge newman who i have great respect for and always have um to 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 rule justly and appropriately. Well, and it's sort of unfortunate that, you know, what gets the attraction is the criminal case when most cases are civil cases involving money. Um, and because they involve money, um, more often they're taken more seriously <laughs> because all we're talking about is somebody's life here. Real money, um, that's where you would have problems. I don't see it. I don't see judges giving advantages to legislators because they, they elect them. Um, Senator, your five minutes. Senator from Charleston's five minutes has expired. Uh, that, uh, unanimous uh, consent to give the senator from Richland five minutes. I think the senator from Lexington is going to do the same. So, with, without objection. I mean, the senator from Col Good. Richland five minutes, five minutes. With the senator from Charleston not asking <laughs> me questions. Without objection, five. Uh, the the senator has five minutes. Thank you. Um, I originally got up here to say this. I got a number of emails, texts, especially from the senator in Lexington, wanting to know how I was. She always wants to know, am I eating well? Am I sleeping well? Um, and I really appreciate those of you who reached out to me um, in this maelstrom of a trial. Uh, it is hard to focus on anything except the trial. We stayed in Walterboro for six weeks. We stayed down there. We pretty well didn't go anywhere, do anything except work on this case. And I want to say a couple things about this process, but at first let me, let me my, my personal observations are that I've been doing this almost a half a century. And it's still, fun is the wrong word, but it's still as enjoyable today for me as it was almost 50 years ago when I began this process of trying cases. Um, and I've tried hundreds and hundreds of them, big cases, little cases. I've won cases. I've lost cases. But that process, if it operates correctly, can be so satisfying to the lawyers. Now, the client, if they lose, they're not satisfied. If they win, typically they feel like they should have won anyway. So it's really not, um, it's, it's not particularly fun for them or satisfying for them. The second point I'd make is this, and, and the senator from Charleston has questions about the integrity of the system. Now, I disagree with Judge Newman on some of the rulings he made. We, he ruled, we objected, it's in the record. The court, uh, Supreme Court, Court of Appeals have a chance to look at it, and maybe even a federal court. But that's not based on bias, or he just had a view of the law different than I had. Now, the third thing I want to say is this. There are, and of course, unfortunately, um, People feel compelled to express their opinion on things through the internet. Somehow they got a hold of my, I guess it's on my website, my email. I really wanted that big case you had, but that's not what they chose to send me. Um, most of it was very positive. A lot of it were people that were watching this in Germany or England or the Netherlands or, I mean, wacky. I don't know, they don't have anything else to do in those countries, but a, a, a bunch of people here also gave me suggestions on a daily basis what we should do or how we screwed up yesterday. But the folks that sent me the, you are a rotten piece of scum, and I hope you die of, let me clean this up a little bit, rectal cancer, um, you know, what, they have a misapprehension of the system. They have a misapprehension of our justice system. While they're very familiar with the Second Amendment, they're not 
they apparently haven't read the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, or the eighth amendments that guarantee us the freedom, the freedom, or guarantee our freedoms of ourselves and our property. John Adams, the second president of the United States, in 1770, eight British soldiers were charged with murdering uh, colonial activists, uh, demonstrators, who charged them. Eight of them were indicted and charged with murder. John Adams represented them. 1770. Six were acquitted, two were convicted of manslaughter, none were, none were hung or, or whatever. Now, he said that everybody deserves to be the presumption of innocence and the benefit of counsel. Why? I don't understand this presumption of innocence and everybody's entitled to a lawyer is such an alien concept. Um, but trust me, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, that we, me and my co-counsel, we got emails. Not all of them wished rectal cancer on me, but most of them are fairly critical. Um, and so those are people that don't understand the Constitution. They also understand one other thing. I took an oath 49 years ago, and I pull it out from time to time and read it as a lawyer, because oaths matter. Your word matters. I will maintain the respect and courtesy due to the courts of justice, judicial officials, and those who assist them. To my clients, I pledge faithfulness, competence, diligence, good judgment, and prompt communications. To opposing parties and their counsel, I pledge fairness, integrity, civility, not only in court, but also in all written and oral communications. Now, I've not always upheld that particular oath promise there, but, <laughs> but I, God knows I've tried. Um, I will maintain the dignity of the legal system and advance no, prejudice, no fact prejudicial to the honor and reputation of a party or witness unless required by the justice of the cause which I am charged. I will assist the defenseless or oppressed by ensuring that justice is available to all citizens, citizens and will not delay any person's cause for profit or malice. So help me God. This is an oath I took 49 years ago and I take it seriously. And by the way, my interest you don't have to convince me you're innocent for me to represent you. That's not the issue. The issue is, can the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? And once you decide that position, once you decide that position, you are free to do what is in your client's best interest. If your mind is muddled with, you know, is he innocent or guilty, you cannot do your job. And I've prosecuted, I've put a man in the electric chair, I've defended, a man who went to the electric chair. I've done both sides. I'm not a Red Sox fan or a Yankees fan. This, that's not what this is about. This is doing your job. So those who out there, this may appear on YouTube somewhere, who don't understand that, go read a book. You know, Abraham Lincoln represented 20 murder defendants. Not all of them were acquitted, but he fought for every one of them. This is about a system. And by the way, that system doesn't exist in this state without us. That's the attractiveness of being in this body. We shape how that system works. So I've come back from six weeks overseas. Um, and, and let me also, Margie's not here today, but Margie Matthews was very kind in letting us use her office to have lunch in every day to avoid the, and I know this sounds so vain, paparazzi um, who surrounded the, um, the uh, Walter Burrow Courthouse, Carlton County Courthouse. And by the way, the people that slept outside for nights to get into the courtroom, get some help. <laughs> Please. S soon. Okay? There's something wrong with you. I mean, you know, y'all cheered us when we came in or whatever, but, but you really, really need help. So thank you for, for being nice to me while I was gone. Um, you took care of abortion. You have not taken care of guns uh, majority leader. Um, you could have done it all and brought me back without having to deal with that kind of stuff. But I appreciate you at least getting some of the stuff cleared out. The senator's time is about to expire. The senator. Well, I'm expired. Weeks. Okay. Well, you've got, you've got, you've got. <laughs> Thank two. you very much.